Hi, how are you doing today? I'm your host, Rich, and we have a Rich TV Live with my very special guest, the CEO of Cognitivity Neurosciences Limited, Sina Habibi. How are you doing today? I'm very good. Uh, how about you? I'm doing really, really well. Pleasure to have you on the show. Now, Sina, tell us about yourself and how you got involved with Cognitivity Neurosciences Limited. Sure. So the company started from uh, Cambridge University. We always say uh, the real one in the UK. Um, it was a, a piece of research uh, with my co-founder whereby he was using latest neuroscience, latest imaging tools available to us, what we call functional MRIs. And that's uh, an MRI machine whereby you can look at the function of the brain uh, and, and find out what's going on in the brain, what parts of the brain activated during, during a specific uh, task. He was looking at human vision. And uh, the idea was to see, again, when human brain looks around, when, when we look at around ourselves, when our eyes capture uh, images, like a camera does, uh, how our brain decode that uh, information into what it understands and respond to it. There, uh, we realize that brain ability to do this, uh, to break down information, visual information, and understand what incites them uh, reduces in time. Uh, as people get older, uh, it takes them longer to understand what happens around them uh, and respond to it. One example we use is that elderly have to renew their driving license. This is not because they have a condition, but this is because they, res they become slower in responding to things happening around them. Using that specific brain um, function, uh, we set up a, a test, a very back of envelope MATLAB uh, code, and we took a test from our friends uh, in, in the uni, and we show a beautiful correlation with age, which showed from 18 to 35, we didn't have any old people around, uh, but when people get older, their performance in our test uh, reduces or declines. And this was the beginning of the journey seven years ago. Wow. That's impressive. I love what you guys are doing. Can you tell us what the main focus for Cognitivity Neurosciences Limited is for 2021? Sure. Uh, as I said, it took us, uh, this, is, this is when you have a medical uh, product, when you have a clinical product, you are dealing with the most risk averse uh, people in the world, in, in physicians and doctors. So you have to bring a lot of evidence uh, to show that your product actually does what you claim it does. And that's what we've been doing uh, over the last few years. We validated our claims about this product. Today, we have a CE Mark product, which uh, unlocks all European markets. Uh, and we have uh, plans in order to receive our FDA approval towards the end of this year. We are going to develop, we have already uh, our product in commercial use within the national health services in the UK. We're going to expand that market. Uh, and then in the meantime, we're having discussion with different uh, clinicians, hospital groups in the US to start using the product free of charge basis because we don't have FDA yet. We cannot sell anything in the US, but we want to get that user <clears throat> um, data in the US, how uh, clinicians go about using our technology so that we fine tune our product for as and when the FDA approval comes in be ready to go out and scale up our uh, operations in the US. That's fantastic. Now, Cognitivity Neurosciences Limited recently announced it has reached an agreement with Dutch telehealth company, Lucy Health Tech, regarding the deployment of Cognitivity's wellness app. Big news. Can you tell us what type of potential revenues this could generate for the company once the app is fully up and running? Uh, great question. Uh, I can't even put a number on it because it's so big uh, that uh, it's hard to put, put a number on it. But just to give you an idea, any corporation, not only a corporation, any SME, any small and medium enterprises, anywhere you uh, want to assess uh, the, the well-being of your staff, you can use our product. And well-being, improving well-being of your staff directly correlates to their um, performance and uh, their productivity. So 
it's uh, in, in that uh, press release we mentioned a Deloitte report whereby uh, it's shown that companies, corporation, average time spend around eight hundred dollars a year on corporate well-being without any tool to show whether these products, these these programs, working or not. And also, as we speak, there is a huge debate uh, across the world of CEOs. Uh, one, some say. Uh, we all have to work remotely. Some ones, uh, such as Goldman uh, Sachs CEO, that wants uh, all their staff back in the office uh, because uh, they believe, based on their opinion, uh, nothing more than that, that uh, one way or the other is the right way. But now we have a tool for the first time that can tell people which model works for your staff, for your company. So this is a size anywhere, any corporation in North America, in Asia, will be uh, able to have a very specific and sensitive measurement of well-being of their staff. And that's the size of the market that we have. And I love it. pretty much no competition. There's no other product that can do this. Uh, other cognitive tests are long, they're bulky, uh, and people get to learn them so they become better at them. One of the key benefits of our test is that we've shown the test is not learnable. So if you give it to your staff and take the test every day, they don't become better at the test because they've taken it over time. But if their lifestyle improves or if they work uh, from home and that has a positive impact on their brain health, then you can see that on their, uh, on their test results. Wow. I love technology. It's just changing and moving so fast. Uh, it's mind boggling what you guys are doing here, but it's, it's, it's amazing when you think about the future of technology and what you're capable of. It's um, pretty exciting what you guys are doing. Can you give us a rundown of the team? We love here at Rich TV Live to learn about the team and the management. Can you give us a rundown of the team at Cognitivity Neurosciences Limited and what each member brings to the team? Absolutely. Uh, we have a little bit of a bias uh, in Cambridge alumni per capita in the company uh, because of uh, the roots of the company, because where uh, it, it, it all started. Uh, we always said that uh, Cambridge Pops are the best uh, recruitment centers because all you have to do is to go there, get a pint of beer in your hand and say, it's impossible to solve this problem. And then two people say, no, it's not. And then you wow. say, okay, you guys are recruited. Uh, so we have a lot of people coming from Cambridge. Uh, the most notable one is my co-founder, who is one of the, uh, 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 I used to say rising stars in neuroscience, but he is a shining star in neuroscience. Uh, he's been uh, conducting research at Cambridge uh, University and also the second uh, Cambridge in, in, in the U.S. Uh, with uh, MIT and partly at Harvard. Uh, he is a, a neuroscientist uh, with, with uh, a lot of publication, particularly in uh, human vision and brain mapping. Um, our chief compliance officer, uh, Mark Phillips, was a veteran of uh, pharmaceutical industry he was at gsk for 35 years and his role was precisely in taking r d projects from when they are validated to the point that they are regulated and uh, ready to be launched uh, another uh, very uh, important um, team member is uh, dr thomas sawyer where i met at george business school uh, which is our uh, business school at cambridge and he was doing his executive MBA after having uh, 10, 15 years uh, of work in, in the world of ventures and private equity and venture capital. And uh, he was mentoring different startups. Uh, and he always tells me that uh, the, the moment we pitched, uh, he said that this, this is the company to work for uh, and, uh, and be involved with. And also uh, we have... Uh, Dr. Chris Kalafatis, who is uh, an old age psychiatrist uh, in the team. He, is, um, he was one of the youngest old age psychiatrists in, in, in London. Uh, and uh, when we, when we uh, wrote uh, the first code, we made it look like a game and we started to collect data. Uh, that was how we trained our AI. Uh, when we gave it to him, uh, it was one of these pop uh, discussions, actually. We realized that over the weekend, he's taken the test 250 times. And we knew at the time that we've got someone who has got uh, a lot of interest in what we're doing. So we, we went back and we started working with him. 
uh, since the very, very early days of the company. So, you know, what separates you guys from your competition? You mentioned there's no co competition. Is there really no competition at all? The, every problem. I always say, uh, I, 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 um, uh, in, in my old days, I was uh, teaching entrepreneurship in Cambridge. And I always say a problem, every problem is getting solved somehow. Uh, and uh, is it efficiently solved? I'm not so sure. And that's exactly with this case. There are solutions, but uh, they're old um, approaches to the, to the problem. <clears throat> we often say uh, the, the, the methodology to detect uh, cognitive impairment has not changed since the very beginning of uh, discovering these diseases. There are memory questions asked then. We're still asking memory questions. <clears throat> but what we do, we have, coming back to what we said, what I mentioned earlier, using latest neuroscience. The, our understanding of the brain over the last five years is more than what we knew for the entire history. And this is because of the breakthroughs in uh, our imaging, our computational power. And that's what has given us the knowledge of the brain that the, it was not existing before. And add to that is our artificial intelligence component. We have a very powerful data uh, component in our uh, technology. We have a patented technology in our cognitive assessment. That's one part. But we've been training an AI model, which, is, which keeps getting trained as we collect more data. The, the analogy we use is that we've had a neurologist that has been seeing patients and not forgetting any of them uh, since day one that we started collecting the, these data seven years ago. As we collect more data, it becomes more and more sensitive and, uh, and specific. So to, uh, to answer the question, two folds, our competitions, uh, normally we haven't seen anyone using the AI uh, to the extent that we do, and also latest neuroscience. We're not going through those old approaches of asking memory questions. Who was the president of the United States who got assassinated in the 60s? That's not what we do. That's very late stage. It's good to capture the disease when it's really developed and uh, it's late stage. We pick it up subtle and subclinical before anybody else can pick it up. That's great. Love what you guys are doing. I love disruptive technologies and we love here at Rich TV Live tight share structures. We're a group of investors from all over the world. We love tight share structures. Can you explain your share structure and how much is held by insiders and potentially institutions? Uh, we have close to 75% of uh, the, the, the company uh, owned by the, the, the insiders. Uh, we uh, basically, uh, and uh, we haven't had any uh, institutional investor. Uh, it's been all through retail uh, over the last uh, few years, but that's what we're going to change in the next, uh, in the next uh, few months, probably. Very good. Very good. I like that. And do you know what your issue note standing is off by heart? Do you have an estimate of your issue note standing share structure? Uh, no, not really exactly at, at the moment. Okay, we'll get into that in the future. Does Cognitivity Neurosciences Limited have any plans of raising funds in the near future? And if so, what would those funds be used for? Uh, we don't have uh, any immediate plan. Uh, having said that, we uh, look at uh, any offer uh, on the table uh, and assess it. Uh, particularly coming to um, strategic uh, investors, whether it's uh, a venture arm of uh, big pharma uh, or big uh, medical devices or even software, because we sit in a very, very interesting interface of uh, pharma, software, uh, medical devices. So there's a lot of interesting synergy uh, for, for, uh, for, for investments uh, from, from these big players. Uh, and if we do that, that is going to be uh, in order to accelerate growth significantly. Uh, we have uh, enough capital to uh, reach our milest milestones uh, with no problem. Great. But uh, with, with a strategic investor, uh, this could be accelerated significantly. Fantastic. <clears throat> if there was one thing that you would want shareholders to know about cognitivity neurosciences, what would it be? Uh, the problem that we're solving is such a big problem and such a huge problem that uh, can be um, can be. Uh, we can I can give you some some interesting analogy to it. It's similar to uh, 
assessing one's blood pressure or wow. someone's eyesight. Um, you all have experience of uh, being checking your eyesight with uh, moving uh, your hand to the left or right or up or down. Um, that simple but sensitive and accurate test solves a huge problem. And that's where we stand with the brain. We have a very sensitive but simple uh, test, which is hugely scalable. And I want you to think about anywhere that you need to assess brain in a very short, sensitive and accurate way, uh, you, will, uh, you will need to, to use our technology. And there is no other tool that does this with this level of uh, efficiency. Wow, that's incredible. We've got investors- Just to tell you how huge the size, the size of the problem that we're solving is and uh, how significant our uh, solution is. We've got investors all over the world that are going to watch this video and they're going to potentially be interested in contacting you. What's the best way for them to reach you? The most direct way is invest at cognitivity.com. <clears throat> it's our email address and we uh, review this, we review incoming emails, but we have social uh, media footprint. You can uh, find us on any of the social uh, media um, uh, channels. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, we are uh, actively listening uh, to our investors, to our customers, uh, because that's how you uh, build a great company and how you build a great product. So excited to learn more and watch your company evolve and grow. Love what you guys are doing. Thank you for joining us, the CEO of Cognitivity Neurosciences Limited, Sina Habibi. And if you guys like this video, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. So every time we have any other breaking news, or anything happening, you'll get access to it first. And once again, the CEO um, of Cognitivity Neurosciences, Sina Habibi, nice enough to join us. Remember guys, Rich TV Live is strictly for education, entertainment purposes. Always do your due diligence, always do your research. Before you invest in anything that we talk about, consult a financial advisor. Chances are when you consult a financial advisor, they're gonna say, where'd you get this pick? And then you're going to say from Rich TV Live, and they're going to say it's a great pick. I really like the pick. Sina, keep up the great work. Love what you guys are doing. We love disruptive companies. And uh, I think you guys are going to go really far. And congratulations on all your success so far. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Take care. And thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day, everybody. Mm -hmm.